and welcome to the Penguin Prof channel. And I'm here today to tell you a little bit about some safety information that you're going to need as you get ready to do the blood lab this week. Um, first item, this is the lab in which obviously you're going to be exposed to blood, which is the most biohazardous substance that we're going to work with. So your attention to detail, just paying attention to what's going on around you and reading the directions ahead of time is absolutely essential. Um, something to pay attention to in terms of your own safety, uh, just be aware that uh, for many people seeing the sight of their own blood is very disconcerting. If at any time you feel dizzy, shortness of breath, lightheadedness, a tingling in the mouth and tongue, you need to sit down. Um, I always recommend that students kind of work in pairs and watch each other. Just kind of make sure that you're okay. Okay, we don't want anybody passing out. Um, also, just be aware of where all of your own materials are. That is to say, we're going to have everybody work on pieces of paper toweling. Just keep yourself confined, right? Don't just spread out. You're going to lose track of stuff. Um, most important thing in terms of safety is you will only be handling your own blood. That is, you are not allowed to work on anyone else. You are not allowed to push anyone else's Lancet button. This is not a clinical training class, okay? You have plenty of time for that coming up. So you cannot help anyone else with this, all right? This is an absolutely essential thing. I know it's hard to push the button on yourself, but that's part of the process, okay? So um, only your own bodily fluids. Everyone will be wearing gloves at all times because there are areas in the room which are common areas where everyone is going to be, for example, putting their capillary tubes, their slides, and there is always the possibility that you pick up someone else's sample by mistake. Okay, so we're just gonna err on the side of caution and wear gloves at all times. The next thing I have to show you is how to dispose of materials safely once you are done using them, and then I'm gonna give you a little demo on how to use the lancets and a couple of the other techniques that you're gonna need. Okay, in terms of waste disposal, here's what you need to know. Anything that is contaminated with blood, we are going to dispose in one of these two red containers. This depends on what kind of material that it is, obviously. Most of you have probably seen these. These are called sharps containers. Anything that is sharp, obviously, goes into the red sharps container. In this lab, that will include the following things. Slides, the microscope slides that you're using, the lancets that you're using, the toothpicks that you're going to be using, and the capillary tubes. Basically, anything that can puncture a bag, okay, is considered sharp. The Bag waste is for anything that is contaminated with blood that is obviously not sharp. That would include blood-stained uh, chem wipes, alcohol swabs if there's blood on them, um, things like that. One last request about the waste, guys. Um, anything that has blood on it goes in these containers, but if it doesn't have blood on it, it goes in the trash, okay? All this material gets autoclaved, which takes a lot of energy and costs a lot of money to process. So please make sure that, for example, if you get a little bit of blood, you know, on a piece of paper toweling, don't throw the whole piece of paper towel in here. Just cut off the little edge, put that in here. The rest can go in the trash, okay? So biohazardous waste goes in these containers. If at any time you have questions about how to dispose of something, please ask your instructors. Okay, my number one recommendation for everyone is that you get yourself organized. So you wanna have all the materials that you need out in front of you. You want to know, as soon as you stick yourself, where is the blood going? I can't tell you how many students have so much anxiety over sticking themselves, and then they get a nice stick and they're bleeding and then they don't know what to do. So get everything organized. Okay, for the purposes of this demo, what I'm gonna show you is the blood typing for A and B and RH, and also filling a capillary tube for the hematocrit. Um, those are actually some of the, certainly filling a capillary tube can be a little bit challenging. So what I have in front of me right now is the following. I have two slides, um, one for the A and the B. I can do that on one slide, so make sure you use your little wax pencil so you know which one was which. And then I need a second slide for the RH, and the reason for that is the RH needs to be put on a slide warmer in order to see the result. I need toothpicks, one for each, so I have a few toothpicks out. And I also have my capillary tube. Capillary tubes are teeny weeny little tubes and they come in this little container. Uh, they're very small, obviously you can't see this from there, but one end is red and I'll show you how to fill this. We'll do a close up in a second. And then I have my antibodies that you're gonna be adding when we do the A and the B and the RH. Um, the last thing in front of me is this. This is called Cryto-Seal, and this is how we're going to seal the capillary tube. We're just going to seal one end. Okay, most important thing is how to use the lancet. 
There are a variety of different models that are out there, but they all have the same basic idea. There's a safety on one end, it's a little plastic T, and you're gonna pull that off. With the lancets that are at the bookstore, you're gonna need the safety, so don't just throw it away. You actually use the safety to cock the needle. So how these little guys work is really simple. There's a little needle inside, obviously, and it's on a spring. And there's going to be some mechanism where you pull the needle back, like you cock the spring. Usually it'll make a clicking sound. And then you place the lancet over your finger and you push a button. And what will happen is obviously the spring releases, the needle sort of juts out and then is immediately retracted. Now in our little cheapy lancets, you can actually reuse them. That's why we have you hold on to those little safeties because the safety itself is the tool that you're going to use to cock the needle. Play with it a little bit, it'll make more sense when you have it in front of you. With uh, lancets like these, these are single use, and so you can't do that little trick with the little safety. Um, it's got a little hinge on it, basically, I'll show it to you, uh, where you can uh, cock this and pull the needle back, but then you can only use it one time. Um, other recommendations, use your less dominant hand, and what you wanna do is go on the side of the finger pad, where basically where the skin is thinnest. We're trying to get the most bang for your buck here, okay? So we don't stick multiple times. If you know that you have poor circulation, you know that when you cut yourself you don't bleed very much, you wanna try things like shaking down the hand, or the best thing you can do is run your hand under some warm water. You get some nice vasodilation, we'll get some nice blood out of you, and hopefully you can do all this with one stick. Okay, so I'm gonna demonstrate that next. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is use a little alcohol swab. I'm gonna go on the side of my finger where the skin is the most thin, and I'm gonna take my lancet. Now mine has a little safety right here at the end, so I'm gonna twist that off. And with this one, I cock it by pulling this part back until it clicks. Now it's ready to go. So I'm going to place this over my finger and I'm going to push the button. Ta-da! I'm gonna squeeze. Hopefully I'll get some blood out to show you. Oh, there we go. And I'm going to try and fill this capillary tube. So do you see how it fills? You wanna get about three quarters of the way up to the top if you can. So there I am. Then you're going to take the open end and place it into the credo seal. It's like clay and it's gonna seal. And now you can just set it on your bench and wait until your instructor has a full load ready to go. For the A, B, and R, H, you wanna have already set up the drops. So this is antibody A, this is B, this is R, H. Get three clean toothpicks. You need a little bit of blood and then mix a little bit of blood with each drop and look for clumps. There's my A. You can see the clumps already, actually. Take a new toothpick. And now I'm gonna test for antigen B. And I'm gonna mix that in there. And then one for the RH, again, on a separate slide because you will have to warm that one. And there you go. Now, I don't know if you can see this already, but both of these are clumping. So you don't need to look under a microscope to see this. You just are looking for the blood clumping and not to be smooth. Now, I have antibody A clumping. That means that my blood contains antigen A. I also clump with antibody B, so that means that my blood contains antigen B. The RH you can't tell because I haven't heated it, but that's how you're gonna do the A, B, and RH. And that's it. Okay, the last thing that I need to show you is our little desktop centrifuge. And when you pop the lid on this thing, it's got a cover. And this is, believe it or not, the trickiest part of it. And we're going to ask that all students allow the instructor to be the one, after you guys put your samples in, allow the instructor to attach this lid and to actually run the machine for you. Okay, it's just really touchy for some reason. So what you want to do is take your capillary tube, and you're gonna take it with the crito seal, that's the, the plugged end that you did, with the plugged end out towards the perimeter. And you're going to find a slot and place your tube in the slot. All right, so there it is with the plug facing out. The thing you need to remember is that this machine has to be balanced. And that means that if it's not full, you're gonna need a partner to place his or her capillary tube across from you. Okay, and that way this thing doesn't wobble when it spins. It's spinning at several thousand RPM. 
and so it needs to be perfectly balanced. So make sure you're always across from someone else. Obviously, make sure you remember your number, and then we will ask you to, when everybody's ready, have the instructor come and place the lid on top. Okay, so please don't press start. We've had some uh, messy accidents with these things uh, when that happens. So um, that's it. That's how to use the centrifuge. From here, you're going to be able to pull your tubes out after they've spun and get a ruler, and you'll be able to measure the hematocrit because all of the, what we call hard fraction, all the erythrocytes, will get pushed to the perimeter against that cryoseal plug, and all the plasma is going to float on top. That's it. As always, I hope that was helpful. Thank you so much for visiting the Penguin Prof channel. Please show your support by clicking those buttons, like, share, subscribe, you know the drill. Join me on Facebook, follow on Twitter. Good luck.